Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. I hope you're getting ready for a wonderful weekend of March Madness. It's one of our favorite times of year at the college basketball tournament. It's also our favorite time of year in terms of where we stand on the portfolio side as we come up to the end of the first quarter, examine the way that our positioning has worked that we, that we took into the new year, and uh, having gone through a full earnings season, preparing now to go into kind of the belly of the year as the second quarter looks to begin in a couple weeks. I want to just real briefly this week talk about three things um, that I think are kind of pertinent to what's going on big picture. All the talk this week, obviously, about interest rates, the Fed, and, and so forth and so on. No real big surprises there. But I will say this. There is one factor by which interest rates going higher has a bigger impact in the economy uh, than anybody else talks about. Uh, people perceive it as being a problem for homeowners, but the reality is that uh, these rates are so insanely low historically that if a housing market was really dependent on rates staying this low, we have much bigger problems there anyways. Uh, to the extent that it could affect corporate borrowing, that's probably a good thing for rates to go a little higher to avoid excessive leverage in our corporate and credit markets from building higher. Uh, there's no real evidence that higher short-term interest rates affect student loan defaults or even credit card uh, uh, payments, so to speak. Um, it's a negative having lower rates for savers. Obviously, the higher the short-term deposit rate, uh, certificates of deposit, money market, mutual funds, things of that nature, higher interest rates are beneficial to the system. The area in which it becomes a real issue is the only entity uh, on planet Earth that has $20 trillion of debt. And that, of course, is uh, the United States federal government. To the extent that the borrowing cost of this extremely short duration term structure of their debt goes higher, it has the potential of blowing out deficits. Their entire blended cost of money of all this borrowing, the funding of their annual deficits, and the interest being paid on legacy national debt is very low. And having had the opportunity over the last seven, eight years at historically low levels to refinance the debt and do a long-term, very low rate, they did not do so. In fact, they lowered the maturities, uh, what we call the term structure of their debt. So to me, if the average yield that the federal government's paying on their debt, which has been roughly about 1.7, 1.8%, were to go up to 2.5%, you're talking about adding significant amounts to the national debt. And I think that that's the area in which the Fed is going to be really kind of caught. That uh, we've already talked about in the past, that low global yields from Germany and, and the ECB and Japan uh, caused them to need to keep their rates here in the United States somewhat low to avoid the dollar rallying excessively. But I think an even bigger issue here is just the reality of our own debt, that ultimately I think rates are going to go higher, and I don't think that rates are going to be able to go too much higher because of the impact it would end up having into our own government's financial management. But that's certainly something to watch because if the Fed keeps rates low, but the bond market uh, says we don't care, what we call the bond vigilantes that rebel, um, if the longer term rates were to blow out higher, then nothing the Fed could do would really matter much. And, and so we'd have a much bigger problem on our hand. That has not happened. Quite the opposite has happened for many years. But you have to remember, that uh, central banks have been using what is commonly called QE, quantitative easing, bond buying, to effectively anchor the long-term rates lower. So I'm getting into some complicated subjects here this week, but, but to make it very, very simple, there's some various short-term and some various mid-term ramifications around interest rates going higher. The Fed doing what they really should have done, almost everybody at this point admits, years ago, normalizing and, and peeling back on their interventions in monetary markets. Right now, I'm simply suggesting that it is not real estate and stock and bond investors that I think will be most uh, caught up in the mix. It will be government spending and the potential of it impacting deficits. I said I had three things I wanted to dwell on. I spent most of my time on that one, but I real quickly want to point out a lot of time spent this week absorbing data out of China. 
continues to very much look to us like they're uh, the the Chinese policymakers are really doing an effective job threading a needle that really can't be threaded forever, but of trying to control a slowdown, still provide enough stimulus to to not see the slowdown accelerate, but then uh, not not uh, enable credit markets to blow out. So there's been some credit contraction there as their monetary policy has tightened. Um, and business investment, industrial production still has been healthy, but it's slowed down a bit. But at some point, that, that, that issue becomes really uh, important. Uh, so far, so good, until it isn't. Um, and then the third thing, the selection of the Trump administration, Scott Gottlieb is the FDA head. I pretty much couldn't have scripted this more in line with what we were, frankly, hoping for, um, but also anticipating in terms of where the direction he would take national policy as it pertains to uh, drug approval, the way in which he had his vision for um, bringing drugs to market and then consequently helping prices to come down. Is there a chance there's still going to be some policy that tries to implement from a top-down bureaucratic level price fixing in, in drugs? Of course, it's possible. He's tweeted and kind of suggested certain things along those lines that has scared healthcare investors to some degree. But essentially what you have with Gottlieb is a very market-oriented FDA head who really believes that there's reform needed in FDA to bring drugs to market quicker and easier, which would bring prices down across the board, not picking winners and losers. I don't know that he'll be able to do it. I just simply know that that's what his stated policy objective is, and we think it's extremely bullish, not just for big pharma, but even for smaller biotech companies bringing innovative and potentially life-saving devices and, 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 and medicines to the market. Who couldn't want that? It's a, a positive thing all around. That's our take here. Thanks for listening to Dividend Cafe. Uh, read DividendCafe.com for a lot more material this week, and we'll talk to you next week. Go Duke.